doorbell at Jimmy's house. Now when you come to my house, my doorbell sounds like this. Hey, welcome to the People's Weekly. I am Tim Best Buds, and I'm here with Canadian Glenn. What's going on, Glenn? Just another day in quote unquote paradise. Oh, paradise. <laughs> so, yeah, um, today we're kind of winging it again because I'm too lazy to do a whole topic list. Um, and pretty much we're going to be talking about what's going on in the streets all around the world and um, a couple other things like these white supremacist attacks and lynchings and it's all kind of related to what's going on in the streets around the world so um, and and it's not just limited to Urban cores, large American cities, uh, neighborhoods or districts that are dominated by people of color. It's it's spreading everywhere because the police has butt hurt everywhere. Big time, big time. So, yeah, the first thing I'm going to say is stay the fuck out in the streets all the time. Don't don't think this is going to end anytime soon. If you could be out there, be out there. If you're working, when you get off work, get out there. Whatever you got to do, stay out in the streets as much as fucking possible. These cops are getting worn down. They're not get I know an LAPD is going to they're, they're talking about giving them comp time instead of paying them for overtime. These cops ain't going to be out there with the heart they have to be brutalizing people. They're going to be like, "Fuck, I'm not getting paid." Which may in return make them want to brutalize people, but hopefully they won't. Maybe they'll still. I'm hoping they, they go on strike or something or just resign. I don't really give a fuck, but um, we're wearing them down. We can win this shit, but we have to be out here. We have to be out here all the time. We have to be out here in huge, huge numbers. You know, and we got to have our demands met. I know a lot of us have different demands, but we got to start somewhere. So I'm willing to concede because my demands are are, are abolish, you know, the, the, <laughs> the four D's, decolonize, disrupt, dismantle, destroy, and then rebuild. A lot of you people want reform, quote unquote, which I do not think will work. And other people just want to defund. Well, defunding is the first step on the way to abolishing, I guess. So if that's what it got to be. It's got to be that. But we got to do some shit. People are fucking dying. People been dying. These cops are murdering people all over the place. And and they get off. And yeah. I think that's the issue. They always get off. Well, you know, like I've said before, reform is not change. And uh, end of discussion, man. That's it. That's the truth. Reform is not change. So, you know, people got to, more people are starting to understand that. And I think that's good. Um, as far as butthurt uh, with the cops universally, I think there's, a dem- there's, there's quite a few demonstrations about how far it's gone. Uh, in my city, uh, the, it, there was a full city council meeting about defunding the police with presentations from all kinds of groups. Of course, 95% in favor. Um, the police thems question real the quick poli- about that. Was that, okay. was that due to our protest out here in the United States or was that because didn't the RCMP just, just murder a, a native man in your, um, in Canada somewhere? The RCMP have killed more indigenous people in the last month than I think the previous year. So, yeah, it's turning out just like it is down there. 
They don't seem to figure it out that killing more people is not going to help. They don't seem to get that at all. But, uh, you know, I think it was last week's show I said that, you know, everybody was blown away that when Greta Thunberg was here early in the year, she drew 11,000 people. That was without any physical distancing COVID measures whatsoever. That was before that. And, you know, three weeks ago now, a Black Lives Matter themed rally drew 15,000 with COVID. So, you know, it surprised everyone in this cracker land, for sure. And uh the, the city council meeting, the police themselves said that, well, you know, you talk about defunding us. The first thing that goes is the, uh, the programs that are specifically aimed at, guess what? Diversity, inclusion. Those are the first things we're going to cut. So <laughs> what more proof do you need that... They are inherently racist. When you're going to cut diversity and outreach as the first thing, y yo, you racist, motherfucker. Yeah. And something that I saw today that was rather amusing on a relative scale. This was in The Guardian, and it happened in Vienna, Austria. Austria. A man in Vienna has been fined 500 euros for breaking wind loudly in front of police. <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a move, the Austrian capital's police force was stretched to defend. The Österreich newspaper reported that the penalty stemmed from an incident on the 5th of June and that the offender was fined for offending public decency. A city police uh, posted on Twitter that, of course, no one is reported for accidentally letting one go. They added that the man had behaved provocatively and uncooperatively during an encounter with officers that preceded the incident. He got wow. up from a park bench, looked at officers, and, quote, let go a massive intestinal wind, apparently <laughs> with full intent, unquote. Wow, that's a lethal weapon. <laughs> and police <laughs> did add that this t fine could be taken to court and fought. So, Was I anybody mean, how injured? Did he get any? Did any cops die in this attack? Well, you know that's that's never that's never the level of measure. It's just, you know, I think it's rather funny that people use the term "butt hurt" when someone used their butt against them. <laughs> it is. You know. You know. You know what else? Did you hear about the the pigs in New York that? Got poisoned milkshakes, quote unquote, with bleach in them. Yeah. And then about 4 a.m. or 5 a.m., the police said, oh, uh, no, that didn't happen. These cops lied. There was another cop that said Starbucks wrote something on their cup or some pig or something on their cup. And that never happened either. They just lie. They make shit up. They want to be victims so bad. Everyone hates what? you. Everyone fucking hates you. You don't have to play victim. You, you, you're the fucking monsters. We're the victims. Why do you think we hate them? Well, it's not just that they lie, but it's the way they choose to lie. The cops are fucking snowflakes. This one pig, I don't remember where he was. I think he was up in Northern California. He said a sniper was shooting at him. He never even got shot. He just made the whole shit up. And when they wanted to see his wounds, that's when they found out he was lying. This was like a year ago. <laughs> oh, man, that is just too much. 
But, you know, I don't know why we should be surprised. Yeah. At all. At all. You know, because this just shows as what's the word I'm looking for in a, in a matter of institutionally stupid. They are showing, you know, how far it goes because now they're pouting because somebody's actually noticing what a pile of shit organization across the board they are. And they're not even smart enough to do something better than you would expect from Karen. It's unbelievable. They and Karen are one. Um, it certainly appears that way, except not all Karens have lethal force on them. Thank God. <laughs> Indeed, man. But, oh, real quick, let me just do a couple announcement things since people are just now tuning in. Um, the Union Radio is going to be tweeted out with a lot, quite a few more missions sometime by this weekend. It's it's not people's radio. It's Union Radio. It's revolutionary speeches, and then they're going to get some um, activists now that are doing things to kind of talk about how they got started doing what they're doing and efficient ways of doing it, and it's all going to be like 5 to 15-minute little speeches and clips all by activists. Right now they're giving up a bunch of old speeches by the Panthers, the Chicano movement, the Brown Beret, um, I think even Greta Thunberg, as you mentioned, was in there. A whole bunch of different groups from all over the place and, and speeches. And it, it only holds so many hours at a time, and then each bottom speech will get bumped. New speeches will come up. Um, and, then, and then they'll get archived somewhere else. I don't know how that's going to work out yet, but Oh, that just, we're going to post it on the union sometime this week. So keep an eye out for that. And if you don't follow the union, it's at you are the union one on Twitter. That's Y O U A R E T H E U N I O N one. The number one, um, you are the union one. So follow and keep an eye out and complete missions on that. And, um, also follow um follow subscribe to us on YouTube so we can start streaming live. That's the other thing we're trying to get. We need like seven hundred we need less than seven hundred more people. So if you go to YouTube People's Radio United dot com I mean just People's Radio United on YouTube, um just subscribe. We need like we need like six hundred and something more people. So please do that everybody. That's really urgent because I can't stream right now, and I feel like I'm not as safe as I would be if I could stream. Um, so I appreciate all the people who subscribed already, and hopefully we can get the rest of these people to do the same. And you can hear me cursing out cops a lot, so it's fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's an understatement, man. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I do. I go to protest and film stuff, and it, you know, if I was able to stream, you'd be see a lot more stuff than these little short clips I'm posting to Twitter, because they only upload a, a ten or twenty second clip at a time with all the madness going on. Okay, well, I mean, I'm a long way from Los Angeles, and I will just say, you know, if you're down with the fucking cause. Watch these videos, because it's not going to take long until you figure out that as you're watching it, what you're thinking, there is an excellent chance that Tim is going to say it without fail. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, let's get back to the show. The commercial <laughs> break is over. Yep. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I guess as far as what's going on in the streets, um, there's a lot of people still out here. It's not as raucous, I guess, as it was originally, and that's depressing to me because as much as people scream about burning and looting, it gets people's attention. Um, now I think the targets could be better. I think it could be focused. You know, there's corporate and, and banking complexes and things like that that would be better than little small stores even if those small stores are owned by million dollar celebrities i mean that's fine but 
there's institutions that need to be burned down. Like why not why not um why not shut all the traffic down by by a smaller police station instead of downtown, like Pacific Division or, or uh, Southwest or Southeast or something where you're not by these giant buildings where you can actually shut it down. They don't have that number of cops, you know, smaller areas. You, you well, can shut a police station down the whole day out there. What are they going to do? We no, got to think. Cannot, we got to think tactically, man. It can also go a lot further than that. Look at the precinct in Minneapolis that they basically just gave up. Yeah, I mean that's that's yeah exactly. But somewhere like just let's take Pacific Division. I know a lot of people listening might not know the the layout here, but it's in between a lot of really wealthy areas or semi wealthy areas. You got Marina Del Rey, you got Culver City, you got West LA, and you got Playa Del Rey. Then you got the 90 freeway, you got the 405 freeway. The 405 is the biggest, crowdedest freeway all day, right? And you could jam all that shit up and just chill out there all day with like 10,000 or more people. Makes uh, sense. Yeah. Bring stuff for the community. Give give stuff away. Give food, water, whatever. Just do your thing out there. Make it a big block party, but the police ain't coming or going from their, their police station. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we we got to think tactically like that. I think these marches are cool. They start on one side of the city. And you walk forever and then you're somewhere else. And, and then people start to disperse. And that's cool. It blocks some shit off. But they're, they're kind of ready for it because they, they're announced. You know what I mean? Yeah. The first few nights, man, it was splinter groups going off everywhere. The police were running ragged. That's what we need them. That's, that's what has to happen. Yeah. You know, we need these cops so tired and so wore down, there's nothing they can do. We need to show them we have the, all the power. All the, Every little bit of power is ours. You don't got shit. Who the fuck are you? And no. well, I, I, think don't want even, it, I don't want it to dwindle right now because this is a, a pivotal moment in my opinion. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I think, you know, again on the bigger picture talking about what a bunch of fucking snowflakes these pigs are i mean look at what happened in buffalo buffalo new york where that 80 some year old dude who's just trying to you know be real gets pushed over hits his head and when the city of buffalo and the Buffalo Police Department actually gave some, you know, some criticism to their own. The entire uh, force of whatever gang these guys run under, whether it's SWAT or special incident response or whatever, every one of those cops on that force quit. Like, what a bunch of fucking snowflakes you guys and, are. And you that should tell you something right there. Well, yeah. I mean, they got all this Kevlar. They got helmets. They got fucking shields. They got weapons. And they pushed over an old man for no reason on video. The old dude starts bleeding from his ear, like, pff, almost immediately. You, you know what and that's you like? Fucking and you fucking snowflakes don't see a problem with this? For that, you're going to pout and give that, up your extra cash? That's like if you were going to Home Depot one day, right? And some old man's asking the, the, the cashier for some change. And the cashier just bashes his head into the wall and goes, I don't have no change, old man. And then they fire the cashier. And all the other employees walk out in solidarity like, why are we not allowed to bash this old man's head as, as workers at Home Depot? What the hell are y'all thinking? They're protesting ultraviolence. I mean, there's a rumor that he was an Antifa provocateur. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, I'm just kidding when I said that. But no, but really, I mean... What other job do people be like, oh, 
my coworkers not allowed to brutalize and murder people, I'm walking the fuck out of here because that might be mean that tomorrow. <laughs> you know, that's crazy shit. Yeah, it's it's like the the aisle stocking staff walked out to support the cashiers. What do you mean? Cashiers can't bash heads? I thought that's what cashiers do. It, it's insane. It is. It's ridiculous. And it's so visibly ridiculous. That's the deal. Like, this isn't something that you have to understand how the police work to get. This is, like, so plain as day. Okay, so we basically bowled over an 82-year-old dude. He ended up in the hospital. No, he didn't actually do anything. We just felt like it. And now you're telling us we can't? Like, I want to see the manager. Like, how fucking Karen of a reaction from cops is this? You know? It's and like these people, it's like these people that try and get in a business, a private business, and they're told they have to wear a mask, and they lose their fucking shit, and then they say, well, I'll never spend another dime here. Oh, no. Promise? Yeah. You know? Wow, man. It's just so stupid. Yeah, it, it's... It's just crazy. But there's a lot of cops resigning or threatening to resign and doing all these little things. So that's great. Well, you know, that that should say something that's plainly obvious to people who can rub two synapses together. Since what happened in Minneapolis, nine police have just walked in and quit. Gee, I wonder what their performance and what their tendencies are carrying that gun and badge have yeah. been yeah what are you scared of like what what do you think you know oh my god i'm gonna go out there and be racist and end up killing some black dude and they're gonna fire me or i might go to jail i can't do this shit how, how do i protect myself from i mean what kind of sick fuck are you see that's the thing too and there's been a lot of uh parodies about it out there you know it's like well, geez, I just started or I've been doing this job of serving the public in a restaurant for years and I kill one fucking customer and I get fired. Like, what is this, man? You know, that's basically how ridiculous it is. Your job is not to kill people. Read what it says on yeah. the door of your fucking car. And don't laugh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Protect and serve. Kiss my ass. It, yeah, <laughs> these fuckers are sick. And they're so proud. Oh, yeah. And I then there's. By earlier, I flipped them fuckers off and said, fuck the police. I encourage everybody to do that. You know, I mean, there's a psychological level to this, too. Tell them they're hated. Tell them they're not wanted in the community. Tell them, fuck the police. You have the First Amendment right to do that. Flip them off when they drive by. Yep. I mean, now, if you're in a dangerous place and there's no witnesses in the middle of the night, I might not, you know, recommend that. I have cameras everywhere. They know who the fuck I am. And they, they have a not a fear of me, a hatred for me, I guess. But I'm an annoyance to them. So they try yeah. to avoid me sometimes. And that's fine with me. But if they happen to be around me, they know they're going to have cameras all on them. And they don't like that shit. They hate that shit. But always be safe. Think about your life and shit first because they will just murk you. They don't give a fuck. But, you know, just, just make sure they know they hate it. Like, I think we said it last week. Like, there was there was some highway patrols at a taco stand. We just mobbed over there, put a big speaker on the street, and bump fucked the police. <laughs> you know, until they left. Until they got yep. their food and left. Just shit like that. Just let them know how fucking miserable they make everybody what terrorists they are they got to get the shit in their head from as many people as possible all the time it absolutely. really is psychological absolutely man and i mean you know and you think about what this is about how this started this time black lives matter how do you think people of color get treated 
not just by the cops, by the public in a lot of places. They do the exact same thing. They'll annoy them yeah. in their face and just basically say, fuck you. Just scroll and down some hashtag of somebody the police murdered and look yeah. at all these racist motherfuckers in there talking about, oh, well, you know, they, they were smoking weed or they did this or they did that. Or they were no angel and this and that and the other thing, you know. Or, you know, the one that's really caught on lately, they were breathing while black. Yeah, but I'm saying these response, they, they always try to justify the police killings. There's always yeah. this group of motherfuckers that does that shit. And if you look through their timelines, they're usually the same motherfuckers that are the most, say the most blatantly racist, horrible shit. Yep. It, it goes hand in hand. Be, like they say, cops and clan go hand in hand. I've never seen the cops protect me from a racist, but I've seen the cops protect racists from me time and time again. Even armed racists, they'll protect them yeah. from me. Go figure that one. And I don't have a weapon on me. Yep. It's me and my yep. mouth and my fist. And these cats got weapons and the cops are still going to protect them over me. Every fucking time my entire life, any city, any state I've ever been in protesting, that's that's what happens. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is, though, I mean, I've seen a couple videos by people that I usually wouldn't watch. But I mean, you know, like, I don't think my opinion is that nobody who is not in the military or, you know, under some other sort of job should have access to any kind of assault weapon. They just don't need to be available to the general population, period. There's no point to it. I don't care about your Second Amendment, blah, blah, blah. And up here in Canada, there is no such thing as a right to have a firearm. It's a privilege. You're licensed. You have to pass. And you can lose it if you fuck up, just like that. Yeah. And, I'm you know, I mean, that's how it is up here. But I watched a video of a dude. I believe it was in Tennessee, and he was filming, and he was also carrying a semi-automatic rifle because open carry, and it's his, and it's licensed, and it's legal, and it's everything else. So he was on a public sidewalk outside a police station with this rifle on, and he's white, and... About six cops came out, and they looked like they were from tactical team. They had fucking Kevlar, and one of them had a rifle, but the rest of them all, you know, had the camo shit on. And they come out, and they want to know what he was doing. And he said, I'm not doing nothing. I'm walking down the street. And then the first thing the cops tried to tell him is the sidewalk he's on is, is not public, it's police property. And the dude was like, is that right? So there's no sidewalk? The sidewalk ends where your station starts and finishes? No. It's a public sidewalk. There's got to be an easement of some kind. You know, and then there was one dude who had his hand on his weapon. And then this guy started going off. He was like, do you think I'm going to shoot you? Are you afraid of your life? Do you see a threat to your life right now? Answer me. Why do you have your hand on your weapon? Are you going to shoot me? And this cop was just like a deer in the headlights. And then one of them spoke up and said he was like the squad leader or whatever. And he tried to play the old pacification game, you know. Yeah, you're right. You know, that line where they tell the person who's pissed off that they're right and they understand, and they're just trying to get them talked into a corner, basically. And this dude was not having any of it. And it was pretty funny, because you could tell from the way the guy was talking, and the way they were looking at him, that this dude is just as hokum yokum in Tennessee as these cops. But because he had a weapon, 
and he was near their turf. They all seemed to think that the only reason he could be there is because he was a threat to them. And I think that demonstrates what's wrong with these police organizations. They basically assume that nobody is not a threat to them, not to public safety, not to society, not to whatever, but to them as an organization. And then if someone actually, you know, enjoyed the benefits of legal ownership right outside their door, well, then, you know, it, it's, it's time to fucking go to throw down as far as they're concerned. It's just ridiculous how they assume that they are always under threat. They always have to be ready to use lethal force. This is just idiocy. And they wonder why nobody likes them. I've seen videos with these First Amendment auditor cats. And they do, they come out hard just for cameras. Like, why are you filming the building? Is this a terrorist act about to happen? Or are you plotting something? <laughs> but I had a question. How did that end with the guy with the guns? Did he get arrested? Did they let him go? Did they, what did they do? No. Oh, no. They let him go. Because the guy who was like the squad leader was like, yeah, okay, we're not going to get anywhere here. You know? And he told all the other cops to go back in the station. It's like, no. Nah, Leave this guy alone. We're not going to get anywhere. Let's imagine an alternate universe where the guy with the gun was black. You think it would have no, been the same way? No. He probably no, been murdered not. within seconds of the police coming out and him asking them if they're going to shoot him. I bet you if it even got that far. Yeah, I imagine they would have come out of the station with their weapons already with a bead on them telling them to get on the ground yeah yeah you know that, that's the issue that's the problem right there yeah but i mean look at how paranoid they are of someone who could pass as one of their own because they have a weapon and they're not in a uniform this is a huge fucking problem man yeah so since we're on this <laughs> weird oh, I, I want to bring up another weird tangent real quick I don't know if you saw it I didn't tell you ahead of time there was this video of this US soldier who I guess he's coming back from whatever military expedition they had him on and he said he's been in the military like 15 years and he's comfortable there he knows who his enemy is but he's more scared to come back to the U.S. right now being a black soldier, not knowing who his enemies are. Did you see that video? No, I didn't. Oh, uh, okay. Well, yeah, it's just kind of bothered me because I'm like, this guy goes to other countries, terrorizes dark people for corporate gain, political gain of a white supremacist nation. And then he's scared to come back here where we got police murdering people to look like him in the streets. Police that came from the same army he's coming from. Yep. You know, it just seems it just seemed like such a, a hypocritical kind of way to think. Well, I think, wow, I mean, what that tells me is that just proves that. You're just a tool to the system, to the game. And, you know, it, it don't matter. You know, I mean, wow. This is a guy who's a man of color, but yet somehow sounds like he's fully bought in to this defensive empire thing. And now it's like he's figuring out that he's not really part of the empire. He's just a slave to the empire. Yeah, it stood out. He was like, when we're there, we know who our enemies are. Who are your enemies when you're over there? You know? <laughs> well, it's kind of it's kind of like the thing with the cops. It's anybody who doesn't have the uniform you're wearing. And the darker the skin, the more an enemy they are. 
Wow. But I mean, you know, how how far can things be fucked with that guy's story? We we need to abolish the military. And until cuz cuz he always get flack when I be like fuck the military, fuck the soldiers, fuck the veterans. I don't care. But people always say, well, you have to understand poor people go in because there's no other options. Well, we need to get another option then. There needs to be something other than that. So you're yeah. not forced to go into some shit where you're going to become a, 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 a terrorist in foreign lands. Destroying people's lives and contributing to fascist regimes and doing terrible shit. It has to end. I mean, yeah. If you want a military, have them chill over here until we're attacked by somebody and protect us. Then people could say thank you for your service because you're actually doing something for the people. But uh, uh, that doesn't make sense. We got, what, 800 military bases all over the fucking world? It's, for what? It's not keeping me any freer. It's not doing shit for me. And some people might say, oh, well, it's making me money or, you know, what? well, fuck you. If you profit off that shit, then fuck you. Yeah. There's got to be an alternative. I don't know. Maybe the people need to start a huge ass GoFundMe for poor people that are about to sign up with the military and they, they give them some money or something. Go to college here. Fuck the military. I don't know. But There's then again, something other than that. Then again, you know, I mean, you can look at the way. Washington is run because if it was an issue of supplying scholarships to keep young people of color out of prison, there's more than enough money around. But, you know, it's just never a priority. I mean, you know, for, to be outside the U.S., and to have a little bit of an understanding of the history of the economic Western world since the Second World War. Whether you believe that the way money works is real or not doesn't really matter because this is the game. Whether that money that's paying bills is real or not, it's still paying bills. Oh, yeah. And there's more money in the U.S. that can be made available to do anything under the sun is astronomical. I mean, really, if you want to get serious about the way money works, there's no problem that can't be solved in the United States. All that's missing is political will. That's it. It's yeah. because the people in charge just simply don't want it to happen because it will fundamentally change the game. What if we said, you know what, here's a solution right here. And it, and it, it involves still giving funding to the military, if that's what they want to do with these liberal assholes. What you do is you say, okay, we're going to have a branch of the military that doesn't even have guns or nothing. And they're just going to go with, with boatloads and um, um, plane loads and everything full of food, supplies, medical, doctors, everything. And... Our tax dollars are paid to go and just heal nations and cities and shit all around the world. How about that? Wouldn't that be better? And then people who don't want to go into the military can still get the same kind of pay, same kind of whatever benefits and shit they get. But they don't have to go and kill nobody, not to follow no bullshit orders that is helping people. I, I, yeah. That, that's a better option than, than what they currently have. But... The game simply won't allow it. That's all there is to it, man. It's just not an option in the way things are done. You know, and that's why it's so obvious that that's what's needed because it's impossible under this game. And, you know, it's, there's just this year already, there's been so many fucking bizarre things. And I think it's been a very, very long time where there's been one or two issues that have screwed basically the whole world. And it's for the same reason all around the world. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this is a, this is indeed a universal problem with this pandemic. 
and you know i i think the pandemic is bringing a lot of universal problems to the forefront too because people oh, yeah. have a lot of time and they're bored and frustrated and have no money right now whatever so the thing is you have all these people and and now they're thinking like what's really fucking me over is it yep. that i'm just a lazy bastard working 80 hours a week trying to pay rent or is it that the system's fucked up and I shouldn't be working 80 hours a week at all. And my rent should be paid off me working way less hours and I should still have shit, nice shit. Why do these billionaires have this shit? Most of them are born with it and they're a minority yeah. and they make all the rules. You know, people are getting fed up and then you got cops out here murdering people and I'm paying for these cops to murder people. Yeah, We got military slaughtering people around the world and I'm paying for that with my federal tax dollars. And then we got ICE fucking concentration camps and my tax dollars are paying for this shit. We got a crooked ass FBI, a CIA overthrowing fucking governments and infiltrating people in our own country. And I'm paying for this shit. The fuck's going on here? That's what people are thinking, at least in this country. In other countries, it's basically the same shit, just different names on the organizations or whatever, right? Yeah, and you forgot the DEA and DHS. Yeah. I mean, all of them, all of them, all yeah, of them. Uh, yeah. I'm just saying it, it's, it's, people are getting mad. We've always said when people get mad enough, they'll rise up. They ain't mad enough yet, but it's starting because yeah. the rise, of, you know, I mean, people are, are, are starting to, to do a, a baby uprising right now. Well, I think the difference is when other things happen, the game can always come up with a fix, a temporary fix just to get people to shut up or take their attention away, you know, throw some money around, silence a bunch of other people, you know, get a big distraction that costs a fucking mountain of money. But this one, you can't do that because it just won't, it's not going to go away until it's run its course. And, you know, I mean, you look at the shit. I saw something online today, two weeks ago in the South Carolina legislature. There was some Republican who refused to wear a mask. Well, two weeks later, him, his wife, and his kids yep. have all tested positive. So, you know, this is what I mean. They can't pay this one to go away. Is they just can't, and they keep trying to re get the money flowing, which is what this is all about. They got to get that economy going. Well, more people are going to die, and it's going to snowball. You look at the history of influenza, the so called Spanish flu, 100 years ago. The second wave was much worse. Because of this exact same behavior. Yeah. And nothing's going to change this time. doesn't matter if we all have fucking computers and, you know, that don't matter. It's going to be the same. Yeah, you, you, you know what worries me is I see more and more of these protests as people holding up signs, just vote or check boxes, um, fight, fight the system, vote, 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 They're handing out voter registration. And, and honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm worried if Trump doesn't win the election and I'm worried if Trump wins the election equally for different reasons. If Trump wins the election, we're headed full on fascism and we better fight our asses off. Um, because it's going to be brutal and he's not going to give a fuck about the coronavirus. He doesn't have to answer to anybody or anything anymore. You see what I'm saying? Yep. He he he's a lame duck president at that point. He could do whatever the fuck he wants for four years, and if he does enough damage, he can do whatever the fuck he wants longer than four years. So I worry about that. But then you have if if Biden wins, people will be like, "Oh wow, America's great again! Yay, Democrats are in charge!" And then this whole shit just stops. And Biden is the one of the authors of the Clinton crime bill. He's a horrible yeah. warmonger. And, and and remember when Obama Biden won the election? They 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 kept all the they they promised all this shit. First thing they did was bail out banks. 
So mm -hmm. they're handing money to the rich already. You think Biden's not going to do the same? And then they, then they, um, <laughs> they did so much horrible shit. I mean, they droned American citizens. They, um, kept everything Bush did. They, they re-signed the Patriot Act, the NDAA. They, um, they kept, um, uh, shoot, Guantanamo. the prison. Yeah, Guantanamo going when he said he was going to close it down. They kept all the wars going because they're they're funded by defense contractors as well, right? Those are their donors. So you're going to have this horrible monster. And they kept, they, they ramped up Bush's immigration locking up locking up children with their families and shit they might not have separated them but they were locking them up yeah so that's what we're gonna have we're gonna and, and you think biden is not gonna keep what's going on now just like obama did and just push it a little further maybe a yeah, lot but, further who knows but you know this is also this is also a perverse way to look at it but i mean there are much bigger problems right now that are affecting far far more dumb fucking americans than that so you know by the time your election comes around don't be surprised if that's never talked about at all well of you course know? not but my point is i mean because neither one can say that shit about each other they can't call each other a warmonger because it puts the light on them too right they can't call one another a rapist because that's going to shine a spotlight on them. They can't call wow. each other a racist because both of them, I mean, Biden hangs out with Klan dudes. Trump was a son of a Klansman. They're fucking terrible people. Well, but Biden will have people cheer. Oh, we're saved. He defeated Trump. You know what I mean? Well, the first rule of Genocide Club is you don't talk about Genocide Club. You know, that's bastardized a little from Fight Club, but it's it's the exact same thing. You know, I mean, there have been people like Chomsky, who for years has said, you know, just talk real loud about things that don't matter. And, you know, that's what will carry the day. And it's worked everywhere. It keeps working. I mean, fuck, look at the United Kingdom with Boris fucking Johnson. Like, seriously. You know, so this is the shit that's selling these days. And when there's, you know, large economic... Uh, fuck, I can't think of the word I want to use. But, I mean, when you're near the edge of the cliff so often... And the cliff is so high, the attitude of people in a majority starts to change. And that's when fascism always gets a hold, because somebody identifies the enemy. This is why your life sucks, these reasons, and we're going to obliterate those reasons, support us. And when yeah. people get desperate enough, you know, it yeah. catches on. It catches on. And I mean, like you said, I mean, if there is a second wave of the pandemic in the United States and it's even worse. And there will be. What attention is really going to be paid to what government powers are doing at the same time? You know, I mean, I think Trump's made it pretty clear already that he doesn't really give a fuck how many people die. Because he's done absolutely nothing to stop it. So, you know, and then you get these fucking crazy governors that just open shit up, just wide fucking open. Like, that's, wow, that's just insane. Yeah. And we're going to see the results. Yeah, I, I, I fear when flu season comes around again. Going to have everything compounded, you know. Well, I mean, the, what's been happening in Canada is, especially in Ontario, our most populous province, they are seeing the COVID cases in people under 20 is skyrocketing. And, of course, they don't know why or how or whatever. 
but it is. And, you know, this could just fuck everything up if it's bad enough. And these people that think it is against their rights or something to have to wear a mask or stay home, like, The alternative is a little much, you know, like I did see an alternate to that yellow flag that you see all the time, except this time it said, give me liberty and give me death. And that seems to be where a lot of people are stuck right now. I don't get it. (laughs) You say it every show, (laughs) Dunning-Kruger. Yeah, that's true. I mean, but Um, this is just so in your face. Like, do you really need to go meet somebody with 40 other people around in a public place because it's what you want to do? Is it worth your life? Is it it worth somebody you know their life? It is if it's TGI Fridays, right? (laughs) Oh, my God, man. It's just insane. The petty entitlement is so childish. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, since we're on the Karens and wackos and maggots and racist pieces of shit, um, we might as well stick to that. Anything else (laughs) or move on to that? Is there anything else on the protest side, what we were talking about, you want to bring up before we move on? We are seeing different reactions from different places. So it's not all a wall of asshole cops. There actually are a few places that are trying to maybe deviate because, you know, maybe they're a little smarter. They got a little bit more foresight. They know if they just draw a line in the sand, it may not have the same results this time. So they don't want to lose their jobs. (laughs) Well, that is part of it. And that's human nature. But, you know, I mean, I've seen a couple good threads. Granted, they are by ex-policemen in Canada, not the U.S. But I read, I'm sorry, I can't remember the account name, but it was pretty widespread. And there was a dude who was a cop for nine years. And it ended up that in his first 18 months... He tried to do the right thing. And for the next seven years, he was sat on, demoted, threatened. Union said they wouldn't support him. His union, you know, he just got shit on for trying to do the right thing to break the mold. And he ended up just, fuck this, I quit. You know, so this is the problem it's when and look at the admission standards for almost all police departments if you're willing to commit violent acts and you're not too fucking bright you're our kind of guy we will arm you (laughs) yeah and we'll give you legal authority to to induce violence that's not the fucking people you should be looking for Those are the people you should be looking to lock up. I agree. You know, they say ACAB, all cops are bastards, all cops are bad, whatever. And that's true because one one, um, rotten apple spoils all the apples. There's no good ones left. But there was this woman, she was a police officer, and I don't know where she was at. And I guess a white officer was attacking some dude, and she said, why don't you chill or whatever, try to get him to stop. She got fired. So that tells you there are no good cops because they, if, they're, if they even find one, they get rid of them. Yeah. If you are a good cop, they will make sure you're no longer a cop. Exactly. You can go be a good citizen, but you're not going to be a good cop. Yeah, that this is, you know, this is way beyond anything that they can fix by passing a couple motions in council. Like, fuck off. That just ain't going to happen. Or taking a 3% cut out of the 
Allah's going crazy, sorry. A 3% cut out of the, the raise in the police budget, not even the budget. Yeah. It, it, it's bullshit. People need well, another- to stay out in the streets until we get what we want. I did see a thread from somebody somewhere in the States, a former, def- uh, a former prosecutor. And she said her and a couple people in her office decided to start gathering data on when in an officer's shift they had the most bullshit arrests. And they found it was like 90% was in the last two hours of the shift. Because then that means they get to sit in the precinct on overtime to do the paperwork. And she said, you want to talk about where to save money in police budgets? This is where it is. They're ripping off their employer with everybody. Everybody knows everybody's in on it. And this is just a way to, you know, it's just like more grease because you saw more shit is what it is, you know. And they have their quotas and all their other stuff to justify their increases without telling the truth why they need more money every year is because they're paying out more bullshit wages every year to do fucking nothing to protect anybody. You know, so yeah, problems like this, this is, I know why everything is happening right now, but a problem like this goes beyond the killing of people of color. It goes beyond the militarized equipment. This is something that is just a pure money drain right off the top. Never mind the toys, never mind the tragic results. This is just theft by employees. Yeah. And it's okay. (laughs) Well, really. You know, I mean, when I read that the New York Police Department is the 33rd largest military budget in the world, it's like, holy fuck, man, there's something wrong here. Yeah, they're literally waging war against the citizens. It's what they do. They patrol. Like, people are talking about, oh, we need cops without guns that aren't really cops to deal with minor shit and that. No, we need this whole shit torn down and and built some whole other way if you even want it. But it doesn't need to be based on what it's based on now. Yeah. It's shit. You don't need quotas. You don't need to keep locking people up for being poor, basically. That's 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 some fucking medieval shit. That's fascism. Plain and simple. I don't know why Olive's going crazy, but sorry for the barking. Um, (laughs) So, yeah. um, So, yeah, I guess we're moving on to there was now five people, four black, one Latino, found hanging from various places. Um. The cops didn't even do autopsies and were digging with suicides. Uh, and, and most of them were, were... I wonder if somebody's at my door real quick. Glenn, just can you explain these for like 30 seconds and I'll be right back about what was yeah, going no on with pro- the lynchings? Okay, no problem. Cool, thanks. I mean, as Tim said, um, especially right now, the narrative that they're trying to sell that these people of color, young men, are going to hang themselves in public parks or what have you from a tree to protest that black lives matter? How stupid do you have to be to buy that, number one? And the other thing about it is, I mean, you know, yeah, there's no investigation. It's just, oh, yeah, it was a suicide. Now sports. Any of these cases, can they prove how the suicide was committed? You know, 
is is there anything that they stood on and kicked out to commit this suicide is there any evidence of them climbing the tree and fixing the rope and then you know jumping out of the tree with it around their neck is there any indication at all that a suicide happened think about other suicides you hear about if it's a gun well that's pretty obvious if it's an overdose well most likely a note the, a, yeah is there a fucking note anywhere I mean, to try and sell this as suicide is beyond laughable. It's it well, it's just ridiculously simple-minded and reaching. Yeah, they did the same thing with Kendrick Johnson. He he beat his own ass and tied it, rolled himself up in a gym mat and died. Yes, um, that's true. But um, that's true. We haven't forgotten any of this shit. But no, um, yeah, it, it was a trifecta. It was a mailman and a, a delivery person, and and a dog walking by. So she was going ape shit. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, the, the, the police. I, I heard it, a, a, a press conference with I don't know it was a sheriff in Lancaster or, or Palmdale or some shit, and they basically said we. They said, why did you assume it was a suicide without an autopsy or anything? Well, because the tree could be climbed on by a person and a rope wasn't tied to the ground. It was tied to the tree. And I'm like, what the fuck does that prove? <laughs> well, it, pr it proves that it wasn't a lynching like this certain one that happened in Alabama in 1908. You know, that's what they're trying to say. The one the cop has pictures of on as well with his parents attending. Exactly. You know, it's like when I was back home and we lynched this guy, this is how we did it, and th that didn't happen, so it's not a lynching. I, I, I think it's a cover-up. I mean, these cops, these cops hate the protesters, which in turn some of these people just say all black people are protesters. They're all the same. Black Lives Matter. Um, a lot of these, these racists say that, so why not? You know what I mean? Find somebody, this is what they do, man. They find people that are away from groups all by themselves, defenseless, you know what I mean? And then they go get them. Yep. Yep. That's true. I've seen I mean, this in the South. I've seen it here. That's how they attack. If they don't have weapons, they outnumber you. They don't well, go I mean, after groups. They rarely go after groups. There was the situation in Tallahassee with a very well-known and very vocal protester, a uh, big supporter and voice for the transgender people of color demographic in Tallahassee. She was missing for nine days and her body turned up. You know, like, these are not accidents. Nothing about this is accidental. These are targeted, racially motivated, orientation motivated killings, is what they are. Yeah, they're lynchings. Yeah. And, and, and isn't it funny that that bitch-ass Rand Paul didn't want to pass the anti-lynching <laughs> bill? You know, so I think that sent a message like this isn't going to be a federal hate crime thing. It's just, you know, whatever. That's an interesting comment. This that could be interpreted as a a signal uh, as a some sort of an OK. To why wouldn't you? Uh, what, what the hell? Why wouldn't you pass that unless you're pro lynching? There's no other reason. I know I he said, no oh, idea. it means throwing rocks at someone could be a lynching. You throw rocks at cops, see what happens if you get caught. They're going to charge you well, with some crazy shit. Well, again, that is such a bogus fucking excuse because that's coming from a racist politician when any, it only takes five seconds of thought to realize that it would be a judge deciding that, not you, you fucking hillbilly. What is he, an eye doctor or something? <laughs> 
anyway, the whole thing, yeah, it, it's it's just like as soon as this shit went down a couple weeks later, a week later maybe, he says lynching's not not a federal hate crime. I'm, I refuse to go along with this. That's just outlandish. How dare anyone think of it as that? And then all these lynchings start happening. I mean, I mean, literal historical lynchings in 2020. In 2020, people literally That's... hanging from trees in front of prominent buildings where they will be seen. That was done to send a message, man. In 2020, that's the part that I just can't fucking deal with. What's the difference? 1940, 1960, 1988, 1920, I, I mean, 19, uh, uh, 2020, it, what's, what's the difference? It's horrible any one of these times. It's unacceptable any one of these times. There was no time in history where where a, a normal level-headed motherfucker would say, "Hey, I think lynching might be a okay thing to do." I'm kind of on the fence here on if lynching is righteous or not. What the fuck? Come on, man! You're murdering people. There's no. There's no. I don't know how these people. <sighs> fuck Rand Paul. That's all I can say. <laughs> Now, what you're saying is absolutely correct. It's never been okay. But, you know, how much how much time has to go by before it's not? You know, that's they ha- the thing. They have, to, they have to have their asses handed to them. That's why we need to stay in these fucking streets. That's the theme of today. Stay in the fucking streets. Prepare yeah. to be out there as much as you can. But now, uh, on top of these "quote unquote" lynchings, uh, today somebody was found on burned to death in a car in Pomona, California. I don't know the story behind that. I'm kind of keeping an eye on it. Um, but besides these five lynchings, you had a shooting. Um, they were trying to take down a statue of, I think it was Christopher Columbus or Thomas Jefferson or something, and these nazis came and and started shooting and one guy got shot they were fighting with people and immediately the police were talking about it might be self-defense the crowd was aggressive toward him and (laughs) you know so these police definitely got the white supremacists back because they are the white supremacists and then you got these these other far far right white supremacist groups like what is it uh, uh adam waffen and the boogaloo ones Boogaloo movement or whatever it's called. The these cats they're trying to start a race war. They're trying to start shit within groups, attack groups. Um they they found them with a bunch of Molotovs going toward a, a protest. They arrested them cats. Um you I mean they, these cats these cats are trying to start a race war. And then you have the guy in the Klan that drove a truck into a bunch of protesters. Like, they're acting up. These these Trump supporter cats are going crazy. And he's not saying shit about it. I mean, last time they murdered a woman in Charlottesville, he called them very fine people. This is his base. These are the people that are going to go vote for Trump. And, you know, I can remember back into 2018 when we were all laughing about him naming the garden gnome Jeff Sessions as attorney general. And now look, now look what this motherfucker bar is doing. It makes Sessions look like a humanist. This is just wow. That's saying that's saying a lot. But I see. But it's true. Yeah. You know, I mean, we've even seen Jeff Sessions himself come out and say, you know, no, that's that's bad shit. That's just too far. And who would have ever thought that? I mean, just like I tweeted last week, wouldn't it be nice if we still had spicy around now? Like, remember Sean Spicer and everybody figured, oh, my God, this guy is just fucking nothing but a programmed liar. Well, look what we've had since Spicy. Sarah Huckabee shovel shit. And now look at this, this blonde bot that we have now. 
which I think is the best picture for the Trump government, you know, in their minds, that's exactly what they want to be known as. Yeah. This blonde woman who will just say, up is fucking down. And if you don't agree with her, you've got the problem. Yeah, you know, I, I got this email yesterday from one of my peoples. I'm not going to say who it is. Um, but it's basically saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read little parts of it. This shit's going to go down before November. These fools are coming out and making it known. Um, in Echo Park, they had ex-military or Oath Keepers peppered in the crowd, perched on rooftops and hills, scoping. The people had no clue. I totally, only one legal observer would listen. Um, um, hang on, <laughs> I'm still reading. Yeah, I guess they got into it and them dudes walked away, so they weren't trying to start shit. Um, they said they seen some people that are knowing right wing people at the the pride parade. And there was when I was there, um, I guess it was Sunday. There was one dude that caught my eye and I just kept watching him. He because I've been to, I've been to, it, it's weird, but I see the American flag and I'm like, holy shit, it's one of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. This dude had an American flag rag, American flag shirt, American flag, pretty much everything he was wearing. But he didn't have pants. They were just like, like, I don't know, just the way he looked and everything. It just seemed like he didn't belong or fit in there. And he was just watching shit. You know what I mean? Yep. But I know people say that about me. But I got cameras. You know what I mean? I'm not just standing around staring at shit. But I'm not saying he was anything. I'm saying he was antisocial maybe or whatever. But I didn't know enough. I didn't question him because he was outnumbered, you know, whatever. But. He just didn't, something just seemed odd about him. And I, and I was watching him for a while because of what he was wearing and how he was kind of just standoffish watching the shit. But yeah, and I, th I was wondering if he was some kind of infiltrator or something, you know, or somebody uh, uh, just there to gather intel or watch or see, you know, weak points or whatever. I don't know. He could have been a cop. He could have been just somebody that was just a little bit odd looking to me that it was perfectly cool. Um, joining the march you know what i mean but he didn't catch my eye but these cats are saying they seen some known people there i guess they were they were um video you know uh, um, streaming or whatever videotaping what 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 decade am i in okay <laughs> <laughs> um or he could have been a taxi driver <laughs> there you go <laughs> no i mean you know, this is something that I'm starting to think about because, okay, first of all, Taxi Driver, I think, is one of the best movies ever. Oh, it's you meant a Robert De Niro Taxi Driver. I, I yeah. thought you meant just, he could have just been a dude like an Uber Taxi Driver standing around waiting for the crowd to go down. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Go ahead. No, but that's true too today. But I mean, this is the thing about when your leaders enable the crazy people that are out there among us and nobody has any idea of what they're capable of. And it's stuff like Rand Paul refusing to pass such legislation, which seems rather obvious that it's a good thing. And not just that, but when people who have issues get fixated on personalities and start to obsess on them. Every word they say becomes life altering to them. Things like the movie Taxi Driver are certainly possible. And I mean, the, the whole story of it, this guy was obsessed to kill a politician. Yeah. But it didn't work out. He got freaked out. So he went on a crusade to kill pimps and muscle and cops and anybody else who suddenly did not fit his vision of righteous behavior. So, yeah. I mean, 
you know, and, and in a place like the U.S., where there's just a couple guns around, this is bad fucking news. Few. You know, this is bad fucking news. I mean, just look at whatever the Las Vegas shooting was about. This is exactly what it was. It's just one well-armed person who decided that's it. Like, I'll never understand that. It makes no sense to me. It's so senseless and stupid. I mean, as far as I know with that, there was like no, nothing behind it. It was just because I want to see what it's like to kill a bunch of people. I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. But I mean. It's disgusting. Get a video game. <laughs> but I mean, this is the that fine line that becomes much easier to cross when the direction and the overall uh, soundbite of what your society is today just goes that little bit further. And that's all it takes to enable a lot of people that are out there all the time. You know, this is the th- this is the thing where, you know, some people I know say I just blame too much on human nature. But that's not a cop out. I think human nature really is that primal, that important in the direction of, you know, either whatever you want to call it, the society or the trends or whatever. Like every, you know, I agree. It's very, very anti-productive, counterproductive when so much time and effort is spent on shit like fashion and celebrities. Well, that's human nature. It appeals. It gets clicks. It's revenue generating. And that's one part of human nature. But the other part is, just like you may be pissed off at how many people get sucked in by the power of celebrity, it's also human nature that there are people out there that obsess in a homicidal fashion. We are never going to get rid of these people. It doesn't matter what kind of society we have. They will always be out there. But we can really do something about how many of them there are and how far they take their shit. And right now on that, right now on this score, I've never seen society, quote unquote, do a worse job than they're doing right now. You know, and I don't know what to do about that. I do. You know? Well, okay. <laughs> what? I, I, it, it's just people, I don't know. Sometimes violence might be needed when you're dealing with a violent opponent who doesn't seem to understand anything else. You can't use logic. They're too stupid. I yeah. mean, if you're that hateful and racist, you're not very bright or intelligent anyway. You're, you're, something's wrong with you. I mean, yes, I, that, I agree I, with that part. There is something wrong with them. They are. Very poor at self-enlightenment. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I I don't know. It just really... I don't understand why they can't just be like, oh, we're all people. We should all love and have compassion for each other and try to help each other and be together. You know what I mean? Our species will survive better like that. But yeah, they, they separate I, the species into skin colors and religions and every other fucking thing. Yeah, I th- no, I get that on a holistic side, but on the purely pathological side, what I'm saying is these people will always be out there. Quit pressing their buttons, society. I, I think the protest are being used to press their buttons by people like Trump and Rand Paul and other people. You know what I mean? 
Yes. Fox News, Tucker Carlson, fucking yes. Breebart News, uh, fucking all these people. Yep. It, it, it's Absolutely. like they got they got their own little mini army that will do their bidding for them. And they yes. really probably want to see how big that army is. You know, like, let's give it a test run. When are they going to give it the test run? I don't know. Now it's little, but I'm saying before, you know, that, that, that email I got, I, I've been saying that for a long time. It's yep. just going to kick up before November. And I don't know what it's going to be like if the motherfucker loses. I know it's going to be bad either way. But I would just hope that people don't say, oh, we got a Democrat. We're saved. He's our savior. And he's doing all this crooked ass shit and throws us a bone or two to make it look. You know what I mean? Yep. It's like he got a rabbit puppet on one hand and he's saying, watch the bunny. And he's socking the shit out of us with the other hand. Don't watch the bunny. Watch the hand that's swinging on you. <laughs> Absolutely. But again... I know it's simplistic, but human nature. There's a yeah, reason well, that puppet well. there's a reason that puppet shows have been around since the beginning of fucking time. <laughs> no, really, man. It's because it's there's something in it that affects us. Yeah. And it doesn't affect everybody in the same way. So I'm going to have to do an anarchist puppet show and go to libraries across the world. <laughs> hey, man, there has been... Is that the only way I'm going to get through to people? No, but the thing is, there have been generations of people that crosses class lines, racial lines. People remember the puppets of their childhood. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a reason, man, you know, because it's just something that ingrains itself in us. And we just fucking hope that the message of the puppets that people choose is a positive one. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. All the fucking people who remember the bad puppets are being encouraged like never before. <laughs> yeah. I just It's crazy. I just I think they think that they're the only ones with the guns because they got them strapped all over their bodies. You know, a lot of people aren't scared to walk around in their own neighborhoods, so it's like they don't need the guns showing strapped all over their bodies like it's just kind of silly. And it's intimidating for just regular people walking around, right? Yes. Uh, this guy walking in. There's mass shootings all the time in this country. You see some motherfucker going to a grocery store with an AR-15 on his back, some submachine gun on his front, <laughs> pistols down his leg, a knife. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, what the fuck is he going to do? Is he going to kill everybody? Oh, I'm just here to protect myself and you. Yeah, how do I know that? You go put that shit up in the car and come in the store like a normal motherfucker, man. <laughs> I mean, like, that's that's just insane. I couldn't even imagine. Like, I'd have to go get my gun if I seen that shit. Yeah. Like, I mean, just this be in is... my pocket. He wouldn't know I had it, but I, I would get that shit. I'd be watching him or I just wouldn't go to that store. I'd just leave. But, like, if I had to shop there and get something and he had to be in there with me. My shit's going to be on me because that's, that's ridiculous. You, you, now you, you've, you've scared me. I'm worried. What the fuck are you planning? Why you got all that shit all over you? That's just it, man. That's what I'm saying. This is part of human nature. That is called escalation by suggestion. And you can't get away from it because we're human. And this should not be turned up people it should be turned fucking down way down and that is not happening you know i mean there's a fire let's put this fucking jerry can of gas this close to the fire instead of pulling it back yeah I, and i, I don't know what they're so scared of I mean, they go in the yeah. subways with guns out on them. What the hell? 
Yeah. I've never had a problem in a subway where I felt I needed a gun pull, pulled out. Well, you know, the one thing about that picture, about that fucking whatever, in Subway, armed to the teeth, the thing that nobody talks about is you have to look a little harder at that picture. And you look at the dude working at the Subway. And he is a guy of color. And you got to take a look at the look on his face to this Cletus armed to the teeth. Just terror? No, that's just it. You know, you don't know if this guy's going to say, what can I get for you, sir? Or are you fucking kidding me? Oh, he's looking <laughs> like, oh, this dumb motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the picture. I just, I remember later on people blew it up and found out that was a detailed replica because that's just not legal. <laughs> So but he's I mean, around, he's like we said last week or two. He's walking around cosplay, yeah, warping with a big fake gun on his back. But the thing is, the look on that dude's face in the subway—like, you gotta be fucking kidding me, man! You know, it's like, <laughs> who exactly does this guy think? he's doing anything for besides himself right and that is human nature and like i said this shit has got to be turned way the fuck down not up and i don't see anybody in a position of authority turning it down yeah i mean you know this is another thing going back to what we were talking about earlier we're going in circles but um we were talking about the, oh, I can't think of his name. The guy that got shot in the parking lot with the, um, he took the cop taser, right? You know which one I'm yeah, talking okay, about? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was, a, he was a dude, he was drunk in his car, sitting in the drive through The cops came, they could have just told him to park on the thing, watched him and said, okay, right, sleep it off, you know what I mean? Or if they really wanted to be dicks, they could have towed his car and said, now you got to walk home for your own safety, right? Yep. But because they had talked to him for almost 15, 20 minutes before before the video or anything. Yeah. So the shit was going on already. And then next thing you know, they're pulling him out of his car, dragging him around. He gets one of their tasers and then they blow him away. Yep. And they showed his video and then everybody's like, well, he took the cops taser and this and that. <laughs> and I, I like this one guy took. Put a, posted up something that showed that video and then he showed these people's responses it was a thread how they were like you know he deserved play stupid games win stupid prizes he got what he deserved and whatever all the, all the racist people saying their shit and then under it he started posting video after video of white dudes doing crazy shit one of them, one of them had a gun walking around in circles around the cops and they were like you know, don't do it, don't do it. Another one, the dude is running after the cops, and the cops are running away from him. <laughs> and he has a big, giant stick in his hand. And then there's another one where this dude is whooping this cop's ass, and someone in the back, I don't know what his name was, but she's like, don't do it. You're going to go to jail. You're going to get arrested. She's, like, just yelling at him. <laughs> and he's beating the cop's ass. He runs around, chases the cops around. None of them shoot him. And then he jumps in the cop's car and takes off. And what would be the common factor? They're all they. white. Bingo. And none of these people said anything else after that. He shut them all down with that thread. Yep. <laughs> it was just like, wow. He just he just did one after another, after another, after another, after another. But none of those people won stupid prizes other than maybe going to jail, right? Yep. They didn't, they didn't get, get fucking killed. Exactly. You would think whooping a cop's ass, chasing another one down, uh, and then taking their car would get any black dude pretty much shot up. No, this wasn't a black dude. It was a white dude. Yep. And people but can you say know, what they want. It makes all the difference. But, you know, Karen says there's no such thing as white privilege. Yeah. 
Oh, all those Fuck cops you, that got Karen. all those cops that got shot up, shot up in um, Northern California. White supremacists did it. Yep. It was a military dude that's an active military member and um, a boogaloo boy. That's what it is, boogaloo boy, not movement. Um, yeah. Well, and I would like to know what Don Ho thinks of the boogaloos. You mean Tiny Bubbles Don Ho from Hawaii? Yeah. <laughs> because all these all these motherfuckers wear Aloha shirts, apparently. That's their oh, wow. deal. Yeah, that's their fucking deal. That's how you tell they're boogaloos. <laughs> if, there's some, if there's some white motherfucker with an AR-15 wearing a fucking Aloha shirt, you know exactly what he's about. Yeah, but I'm sure they also don't wear those shirts when they're doing other things. So like don't 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 just say oh. <laughs> I don't know, man. A Nazi wears the same shit all the time. Not when they're infiltrating shit. Not well, when they're trying to do other shit. But they're not real good at not being a Nazi. See, this is what I mean. Boogaloos are boogaloos. That's what's wrong with them. Yeah. Doesn't it bother anybody that, you know, any of you Trump supporters, I know we have thousands that listen, <laughs> but doesn't it bother <laughs> any of these people that the, the the Nazis and these violent terrorist organizations are on the same side as them on most of these issues? Yep. And these are the same people, you know, that, that would have been fighting against segregation I guess ending segregation. These are the mm -hmm. same people that would fight against ending Jim Crow laws. These mm -hmm. are the same people that would fight against biracial marriage. I mean, it wasn't until yep. the 60s a lot of these things started happening. And people were in the streets fighting when? In the 60s. Yep. So, so we got to keep going because those changes obviously weren't enough. People lost their lives. People went to prison forever people got exiled from the country um people gave up a lot to make those changes so shit's better now than it was then and it's still fucking horrible so why yep. should we stop you know we need to complete the mission we need to finish what they started and, and, and it's not going to be comfortable, it's not going to be pretty, and it's not going to get anybody famous or, uh, um, you know, whatever, paid or any of that. It's just going to be some grimy-ass shit. But in the end, you 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 benefiting the future of your species. Every color of your species. I mean, these fucking racists don't be like, oh, I only want a white dog. They don't give a fuck. They'll take any kind of color dog. Why do they think people are any different? I don't understand that. Well, I'd like to know when people thought that granting equality or granting civil rights was something that, you know, We'll do it for a couple generations just to shut these fuckers up. And then we go and take them all back. Yeah, you know, they're called rights because you're not granting them. They're ours. You're stealing them from us or we have them. That's how it works. Yeah. There's no granting shit. Fuck that. Human rights are human rights. We should have certain things and we don't. And damn it, we need to get them. And if we don't get them, we need to be out in these fucking streets tearing shit the fuck up. Yeah. That's it. And if we want to keep going down this path, how come it's only fucking whitey that never has to fight to keep them? Because you know? they currently have them. No, but I mean... If Whitey never thinks they're going to be taken away from him, 
What's wrong here? Did you see this preacher motherfucker wants to say white privilege needs to be the the term white privilege needs to be changed to white blessings? Because <laughs> and this is what he literally said because slavery was disgusting and horrible, but it was still a blessing for the white people. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Man, these people are blatantly racist. And they don't give a rat's ass. They're terrible. How do you change that? You have to change everything from the way children are educated. This is another thing. Let's go on a tangent real quick. Before we wrap. The, um... What's the press secretary's name? McKinley. Oh my god, I can't think of her name. You know yeah, the new Sarah Sanders, the new Sean Spicer, the new all of them. Yep. But um, she said, what are we going to do? Erase these people from history by taking down their statues and, you know, all this. And nobody's saying that. We don't want them erased from history. We definitely want to remember them through history. But we want yep. them remembered how they were. And we don't want to pay tribute to them. We want to teach every kid about all these people and all the genocides and the horrible fucking shit they've done and how they're child rapists and, 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 you know, not maybe little kids. You don't teach that part, too. You just say they're horrible people. What I don't want is for these people to be lionized or deitized or any of that shit put on statues in prominent places and looked up to. They need to be looked at as a scum they were. And, and they need to be real about it. All this revisionist history is bullshit, man. This country was built on horrible, horrible, horrible shit. And they need to teach kids from the time they're little, little tiny babies, never fucking again. If we see fascism, we stomp it out. If we see racism, we stomp it out. If we see sexism, we stomp it out. Talk about how... how Women weren't allowed to vote at one point. Black people weren't allowed to vote. And if they say voting's important, then that's like, you're not even equal. You should be able to choose not to vote if you don't want to vote. We need to be able to vote, but we need to vote on not people. We've talked about this before. It's a whole other issue. But man, well, it's just... It's, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I know what you're saying. And this is where it is. Fascists say that you either remember this person the way we want you to, or you, or he has to be erased. There's no fucking alternative. See, this is fascism. This is the way fascism thinks. You either remember this fucking piece of shit the way we tell you to remember him, or we have to erase him? That's how fascists speak. Yeah, I mean, I don't want any of these people erased. I want them remembered throughout history exactly how horrible they were. So people say, oh my God, these people are horrible. We don't want yep. anything like this ever again. But fascists don't subscribe to that. You yeah. either remember this son of a bitch the way we want to remember him, or I guess he has to be erased. This is the fucking paradigm they offer. Nah. But nah. this is all feeding these psychos too, man. All this shit they get. Yep. They're getting a whole... They're getting all their news from a few sources. Right wing... Really, yep. really ultra racist fascist sources, and they believe everything other than that is fake news. And then yep. you go even further and you get to those QAnon motherfuckers, and oh my god, they're batshit crazy too. Yep, but again, I go back to the taxi driver thing. But this is this is taxi no, driver no, no. with the president of the United States giving him winks and nods all day. Yeah, exactly. And this is what I mean. There, There's some crazy fucker out there 
who says, hmm, all these people want to take down this dude's statue, eh? Hmm, okay. Then this crazy motherfucker looks into who that dude is, and he says, wow, no, fuck that. I like this dude. Who wants to pull him down? Fuck that. I'm going to kill those fuckers. You know, there are people out there. Oh, but no, nah, no, nah, fuck it. I don't want to talk about that anymore. That's too fucking scary. <laughs> People need to be ready to fight these motherfuckers. There's going to be acts of terror. I mean, they're calling us the terrorists. The fascists are calling anti-fascist terrorists. Go figure. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, from the White House all the way down. We haven't killed nobody. We haven't. We haven't done shit. These yep. motherfuckers are plotting terror attacks, shooting people, stabbing people, trying to put bombs and shit. Yep. And they're never called the terrorists. They're called very fine people. Yep. They're called upstanding Trump supporting citizens. They're called patriots. I don't recall any person of color blowing up Planned Parenthood clinics. I don't recall any person of color blowing up the building in Oklahoma City. The people who do, what do they have in common? Oh, yeah, they're all fucking crazy crackers. McVeigh was a white supremacist. Yep. And a veteran. (laughs) Yeah. That happens a lot. (laughs) Seems to. Oddly enough. Yeah, oddly enough, right? Um, yeah, it's, it's a fucked up situation, but right now we could win this. And it's up to everybody. It's up to every person listening to this. It's up to every person not listening to this. So if you are listening to this, tell the other people it's up to them and to get the fuck out in the streets. Don't give up. Don't stop. Take care of yourself, though. But be out there as much as you humanly can. The bigger the crowds, the better across the whole country, nonstop. The whole world. The whole world. But, yeah, I'm just... Shit. We, we, <laughs> That's right. Everybody looks down on us right now because we're the ones... That are supposed to have some kind of freedom and equality, and yet we don't. Um, Yeah, there's going to be soldiers in the street again. We got to kick this shit back up. And we got to go to fuck all the way hard, all day, every day. That's right, because you know what? I live outside the United States. Do I want to go help you? No, not happening. But do I believe in what you're fighting for? Yeah, I'll fucking die for it here. But I ain't coming (laughs) to help you. You know? You know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) I mean, again, that's human nature. People all around the world are fighting, are protesting, are marching. For Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Do you think any of us are going to come help you? Uh Uh-uh. Well, it all helps, though, because there's a lot of oppressed people around the world. And, and, you know, as far as being the union, I believe that everyone's equality should be fought for equally at the same time. It's just locality. Yep. Like I'm here. I got to fight where I physically can be at and get to easily. I can't yep. get to Palestine. I can't get to Syria. I can't, you know what I mean? Yep. I, I can't get to places to help other people. So I'm here and I'm fighting here because the fight's on here too. And right now, hopefully it's going to get really real, but seems to me it's dying down a wee bit. Well, a lot bit from the beginning. They, they shamed people into not um, doing any damage. 
property damage. And the fight is the fight is real everywhere. But you can only change it where you are. Yeah, unless you got the money and means to get all over the world. Yeah. And um yeah, but that's that's the thing. Fight, 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 stay out in the streets. Nothing changes by clicking nothing changes by clicking your fucking mouse. Yeah, I mean if you if you have to be there, some people can't leave their house then then social media is a way to share other people what's going on and spread the message, spread the word. But if you can get out there, get out there as much as you can. Yeah. It's um it's getting rough, man. The coronavirus, people still aren't working, you know what I mean? My industry's having insurance issues, so, you know, they say if if, if um, coronavirus go, you know, someone catches it on a set, then they could sue and shut down a whole production or whatever. So, I don't know when that's going to come back, you know, so that's crazy. But that gives me time to get out in the streets, right? Well, I mean, with everything else, I think, you know, it's it's understandable. If you have health issues or you have health security issues, I get it. But don't let the powers that be tell you that there's a lot of things you cannot do safely because you can but you just have to do it right and everyone has to do it yeah that's the deal right always have a plan and have a backup plan and have a backup plan for the backup plan (laughs) now as far as far as corona goes look at new zealand They had a rugby game with the with a record crowd last weekend. And they're all really fucking happy that they can do that. But how did they accomplish it? Yeah, they killed it quick over there. When they knew that they had a problem, okay, that's fucking it. Everybody goes home. We'll see you when we see you. And they did it. Yeah. And nobody had a fucking, there are no fucking Karens allowed. And they did it. We'll see if it holds. But, you know, there is a different way to do things, people. Yeah, I, I think it, it just comes down to the media right now. Not, it's not the media's fault. I'm not saying, I'm saying it's just when, when these people watch, especially on the right wing media, or any media. They're going to see people in the streets protesting for black lives. They're going to see people in the streets protesting for Latino lives. They're going to see a lot of white people out there. And these people, some of them, I'm assuming, just get angry. Like, damn it, if more people have more rights, I won't feel special anymore. Because mm-hmm. there's no such thing as white privilege. Yep. <laughs> exactly. It's just crazy. You know, man. like... I did see one person say, you know, nobody's saying that your life was a fucking bowl of cherries because you're white. But there were an awful lot of things you have no idea about that didn't get in your fucking way. Like you can just jump in a cop car and drive off and not get murdered (laughs) after whooping (laughs) a cop's ass. (laughs) You know, but this is what I I get it. I get it. I have no idea how many things I didn't have to deal with. But I know they're there. You know, I recognize that. And I don't think that's right. Yeah. You know, that's all there is to it. (sighs) Oh, well. (laughs) Anything else? 
Uh, no. Cool. Well, um, I guess we might be back next week or something, or maybe not. Who knows? <laughs> Depends yep. what's going on out in the streets. So, yeah, I guess the message of the day is stay out in the streets. Fuck the police. Black Lives Matter. Stay out in the streets. Keep fighting. And um, keep an eye on the union. It's at you are the union one on Twitter. I'll spell it out. Except one is a number. So cool. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And we'll catch you when we catch you.